OK. So ladies and gentlemen, what we're asking to do is they want us to solve by completing the square. So we got to remember kind of the process that we talked about completing the square. But before we even do that, um, I want you to kind of look at how would we solve this problem. Remember, when we're trying to find the solutions, we're trying to find the solutions that are going to make the solution or the values of x that are going to make this equation true. That means the values of x that are going to make this side of the equation equal to 0, so both sides are equal to 0. So when we have more than one x, we can't use our inverse operations. We have to look into factoring. Now, automatically, I see that 36 is a square number. So like we've learned before, I would want to go and see, can I use a perfect square trinomial to, to factor this? So I go 6, 6 squared, good. But is my middle term twice 6? No, it's close, but it's not 12. So I can't factor this by using perfect squares. The next thing I want to do is see if I can suffocate myself, or, or I can see if I can um, find other two values that I can factor this with. So I look at what? You have 12 and 3, um, 6 and 6. But again, none of my factors of 36 are going to add up to give me negative 13. So usually what you guys write before this would be prime, right? Right? Yeah. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a technique to solve for this. So what we're going to do is I'm going to kind of forget this value right now. And I'm just going to say x squared minus 13x plus c plus 36 equals 0. So what I want to do is I want to create a perfect square trinomial. Okay, And if you guys remember, we worked on finding that value c, right? right? We worked on finding that value c. The value of c in our problem was c equals b divided by 2 squared. That's how we could find the perfect square trinomial. This is only for a perfect square trinomial. So therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add squared. I'm going to put parentheses around there, and I need to determine how am I going to find what is my perfect square trinomial for c. So what I do is I take negative 13 divide by 2 and square it. Now it's very important, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be dealing with fractions. Do not convert to decimals and try to round it and stuff. Because we're going to also, rather than dealing with fractions, we're also going to be dealing with square roots. And your answers are going to be wrong. Not wrong, but they're going to be approximate, and we want exact. So therefore, this answer is 169 over 4. All right? So therefore, I write x squared minus 13x plus 169 over 4 plus 36 equals 0. Now, here's the important thing, ladies and gentlemen. If I add, if you guys go back to your equations, when you guys did something like this, x plus 4 equals um, 10. To solve for this, we subtracted 4, right, on both sides. If you subtract 4 on the left side, what do you have to do on the right side? Subtract 4, right? You guys are like drilled into that. So if I add 169 over 4 on the left side, what do you think I have to add on the right side? 164. So it's actually going to be 0 plus 169 over 4. OK? So now we need to determine, remember, by adding c, we created a perfect square. We created it. So therefore, we know it's a perfect square. Remember in the worksheet, I told you guys to find c, then find the perfect square that you created. So therefore, this is going to be x minus 13 divided by 2 squared plus 36 equals 169 over 4. If you guys remember, when I showed you that last problem, how did I figure that out? What I did is I pretty much did x plus b divided by 2 squared. All I really did to find this number, which a lot of you guys have trouble with, I did b divided by 2. b divided by 2 is negative 13 divided by 2. That way I could put it in there. That's a way for you to know what your perfect square is going to be. Okay. So now you guys have this crazy equation. Well, guess what? We only have one x value. So therefore, since we know we only have one x value, we can now solve for x by using inverse operations, right? We don't need to factor this. We just need to use inverse operations. So the first inverse operation I'm going to do is subtract 36 on both sides. So I have x minus 13 divided by 2 squared equals 169 divided by 4 minus 36. Now you might say, oh, 
subtracting fractions, right? So, yeah, kill us now. So, how do you do that? Well, you got to get them to be the same denominator. So you multiply by 4 over 4. So you get 169 over 4 minus 144 over 4. Therefore, you get 25 over 4. So really, 169 divided by 4 minus 36 equals 25 over 4. So now what's the next inverse operation I have to use? Well, I'm squaring it, so I have to take the square root. So therefore, I get x minus 13 divided by 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 4 is 2. So now I'm just going to separate this into two different equations. So now I have to add 13 over 2 to both sides. So I'm going to have two equations. My two equations now are x equals positive 5 over 2 plus 13 over 2 and x equals negative 5 over 2 plus 13 over 2. 5 plus 13 is 18. 18 divided by 2 is 9. Negative 5 plus 13 is 7. 7 divided by 2 is, I'm sorry, that's not 7, that's 8, right? 8, negative 8, x equals negative 4. Which, that actually is backed up factoring. Why, why didn't anybody say 36? I didn't even think about that. That didn't even come to my mind. Well, anyways, w it would factoring been a lot easier way to solve this problem? Yeah, you guys, we could have factored this with 9 and negative 4, right? I didn't even come to my head about thinking about that. Because 9 plus negative 4 adds a negative 13, but they multiply to give you 36. However, the directions said to use this method. All right? So this is the method I want you guys to use because you have to get practice on solving this method because we want to use completing the square. When you can factor it, you're just going to want to factor it. However, when you can't factor it, this method is going to be very valuable. Okay? Yes? One sixty nine divided by four minus thirty six. Right? You can't subtract fractions unless they have the same denominator. So I multiply by 4 over 4. 169 over 4 minus 144 over 4. Make sense? Because 36 times 4 is 144. 169 minus 144 is 25. Four, and then the 4 is your same denominator. Okay?